Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here, get ready for Christ Consciousness. Now, uh, I want to cover here as I continue, and I will be writing a book on uh, Satanic cults, uh, Michael Aquino, uh, specifically in the future here, because I think a lot of information should be gotten to the public since there's such misinformation. Now, it's not about taking sides. I mean, how could anybody be on the side of... Uh, pedophilia, murder, negativism, destroy the planet, and everything else, which is kind of interesting because uh, Satanists uh, tend to be protectors of the planet. Um, Charles Manson was a great ecologist, and um, it appears that these satanic groups, or at least uh, labeled themselves either presently or in the past, are trying to save animals. This is a fact, and they've stated this, and... Uh, so forth, the Temple of Set was apparently involved in this. I don't know what they were doing. They don't want to publicize it. And that's one of the problems. If we're going to improperly, quote, demonize, pun intended, um, these uh, satanic organizations as being horribly bad, well, then we have a problem with the fact that we've labeled them uh, unjustifiably. Now, you don't have to get involved with them. We need to know the truth. If they're up, if they're up doing illegal, evil, evil acts and hurting everybody, no matter whom that is, and obviously uh, the intolerable pedophilia that uh, they've been blamed on. But, you know, the, your average pedophilia is going to be a uh, Christian white guy. That's who's involved in all that stuff. So to think that you know, Satanism, even if we give them a lot of lead way and we go into black magic practitioners, uh, which can, are pretty much Satanist, but, you know, there's a term. It's like pedophilia. It's 13 and below. That's pedophilia. That's what the legal uh, quotation of it is. Uh, Satan isn't someone who follows and worships Satan, either directly or indirectly, meaning a lot of people call themselves Satanists, but they're not worshipers. They want something alternative, but I think that's childish. But, you know, Satanists are kind of childish when you think about it. Michael Aquino is not a great intellect. Uh, he tricks people that way, but he's really not. So the whole idea is we're trying to get to the bottom of this, but uh, chasing the red herring, being distracted by the people who are really doing things and then pointing towards other people is a classic uh, psyops technique to get you going after the wrong person. So we have to go after the right people. And um, everybody claims they want to deal with freedom. And when their freedoms are taken away, particularly of speech, they cry like little babies. Now, these people have a freedom of speech as well. They do not have a freedom of acting in against society, uh, of saying that's okay to do things that society says it's not. That goes for everybody, no matter whom they are. Um, and that's why we have a, in the United States, there's a federal constitution. Because if we had certain states vote for slavery, I'm sure we'd have several states that would vote for slavery today. So what are we supposed to do? That's why I have a constitution. And this is a, a state's rights issue, which has always been a uh, big debating area of how much state's rights should a state have. But we'll get into that right now. But uh, in a furthering research into Michael Aquino and what he said about extraterrestrials, advanced technologies and um, in general so he has stated in interviews uh, towards the end of his life he died shortly after this within months or pos possibly a year or two but he's come out and made certain statements claiming that he was in the army space program the first one there he was stationed in Cherokee Mountain for four years uh, this is in contention because he was let out of the military in 1990. He claims he was started this program in 1990 and was there for four years. Well, the records, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, in terms of when this stuff where he was released from his contract by the military it was 1990 or 1991. We're going to have to piece this together because it is a critical area uh, to understand. If we can find that he is lying, that he was... Uh, let go from the military in 1990, that yet he claims he continued for four years longer in this space program, which is very difficult to check. Cherokee Mountain is highly secure, one of the top secured bases. Uh, you're not going to hear people talk about it. You're not going to be able to find information on it. It just goes on and on. And the fact that he was the first one, well, we can't find anybody else that says, yeah, I was in that program too. And it doesn't appear it is has, as so he claims, is no longer in existence. He likes to follow up on that. Really, 
tricky PSYOP stuff. So Michael Aquino is still a big question mark. Um, he's been put out there as the um, blame everything on. And I always am suspicious of that. Why is he the only one getting attention? There certainly were lots of other officers out there. He's become the fall guy. Now, he may have been appointed the fall guy because there were allegations against him at the Presidio military base uh, with child molestations. When you look at the initial story of that, uh, the allegations against him, which were dropped, and the other person that was there who had 60 allegations against him, they never went through on anybody. Now, does that mean it didn't happen? Well, I'm afraid we can't say anything anymore because of the high level of corruption. The incompetency of the military is at the highest level. I mean, there's 100, and then as going up to the top and with the military, it's 150. So... <laughs> You know, you can't go past the 100. You know, I like when retards say that. I support you 110%. Well, there's no such thing as 110%. Well, we're, we're, we're saying that this is at the extreme. So, uh, there's so much corruption, there's so much cover-ups, there's so much everything else that we can't really believe anybody. Uh, but why somebody wasn't prosecuted, and there's, I won't get into that right now because we're talking about the space program, but this is something uh, that we have to understand. But, you know, he is a high-ranking, regardless of when he left the military, he's a high-ranking military intelligence officer who claims he worked with the CIA. Uh, and, uh, he didn't work with the NSA, the CIA, the, the um, all the, apparently he worked with just about everybody except the NSA, which he claims he didn't work with, which I find hard to believe as well. Uh, they're kind of all mixed together, and uh, but it was something that uh, he claims he didn't like them. Well, is that more psyops? So I did, I don't like them people. I never work with them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hello, yeah, hello NSA. How you doing, buddy? So we we just don't know. The whole idea is that. Um, this we can't believe anything we're searching for facts here and we're also trying since we can't get any legitimate information on anybody else we got a bunch of whistleblowers a bunch of people said i worked at this program well there's no proof of any of that stuff and it's a terrible situation we have bob lazar which his information makes sense um a lot of his stuff doesn't make sense in terms of his education and other things. But, you know, that's all part of keeping this guy a question mark, which is why he's still alive and operating. You know, Bob Lazar was um, owned a prostitution business, which was legal in Nevada, where it is legal, um, and a lot of other things. He's got questionable backgrounds, questionable education, but that's the kind of people that talk. If you were the sterling silver of the particular research area, they would probably kill you instantly. It's only the quasi people that they allow to uh, talk. And secondly, they want them to talk. They want the information out there as kind of a way of uh, disseminating uh, information without credibility. And God, they love to do that, particularly the CIA, because they'll come out and say that something is 100% true. Then they'll come out five years later and say, well, that's all nonsense. Well, we didn't say that. So what happens is you've got two opinions out there that kind of cancel each one out. So what did he say about this? Now, he was interviewed on um, um, several different shows. One of them was with, oh, I always forget his name, Oliver Stone's son. That's another freak, Oliver Stone. Don't know what to make of him. Um, when he was interviewed, he interviewed Michael Aquino, and you can find those on YouTube. He's been interviewed by several other people and seemed to have liked this one particular guy he had several long interviews with. And I think he was using him to uh, to get information out before his death. From what I can tell, that these may have been his last interviews before he died. Uh, he claimed he had cancer in 2015. He almost died from that. He came back, survived another five years, and then the cancer came back, and he was in pretty bad, very bad shape. And of course, cancer runs in his family. You know, he's hiding as a vampire. He's living in Transylvania, and he does all his evil from there. So, he has a satellite phone. His number is Dracula8567. So, the whole idea is that we've got to get a little bit of, uh, you know, he's been blamed of everything. One new guy, I can't, he's not new, he reported this fight. He, he killed thousands of people. Him, Aleister Crowley, another guy who killed thousands of people. I mean, what is this nonsense? Um... 
Uh, Aleister Crowley was not a Satanist. He was an evil magic practitioner. There's a difference. And he didn't pray to Satan or worship Satan. Uh, he was into negative practices, when I can say. I don't like his attitude, his comical little British way. All of that stuff is quite annoying. And so much uh, about nothing. And Aleister Crowley was nothing. Um, he couldn't sell his books when he was alive. Uh, nobody cared about him. He had money from a rich daddy. Um, the rest of it, what did he do? Well, so what? He got into the news because uh, apparently people pushed him there and there was some interest in him, whatever that means. So what are you going to call yourself? The only way you're going to get attention uh, to yourself is you're either going to call yourself Jesus and people will laugh at you. They, David Icke did that. I'm Jesus. I mean, here's another guy that rapped too well, even though his information seems to be okay, but it's going through a strange filter there again. Uh, he thinks he's special. Uh, so the whole idea is we have a problem when you get to a certain level. You, yes, you are special, but you are not uh, a deity. You are not divine. And he has no answers. And I have problems with people that don't have answers. Because if you know what the problems are, you also know how to stop this. So the whole idea is he don't have that. So the whole idea is that we get involved with these people. And I don't want to get too distracted here again. So uh, we just don't know, but he has all these connections and had them for uh, an entire military career. I think he was in the military 20, 30 years, whatever it was, uh, before he was apparently thrown out. So this is detailed in the New Satanist book, a highly recommended book by Linda Blood. And uh, these are difficult to find and very expensive, but do check my links. Uh, we will be getting that book. Uh, I will be giving you the link to where it is. Um, you may be able to find it at archive.org, the library for the internet. And they have a giant library there, and I don't think anybody knows that. So um, you can't necessarily download it, but you can read it online. I also believe that Scribe has that book as well. And again, it's kind of hard to access uh, initially. Uh, but you can set up a free account, upload some things, and read books for free. Uh, figure that out. So the whole idea is that, what did he say about it? So he was on several interviews. He also st spoke with Oliver Stone, Stone's son in an interview. And as I said, you can find all these. And um, he talked about this a couple of times. Now, with this guy, um, I believe it's Michael Decon, kind of an odd little guy that interviewed him. And I don't know why they became kind of these interview friends. Apparently, he is not a Satanist, he has stated. Um but he knows a lot of Satanists and whatever's going on there. I, I have no idea <clears throat> So, uh, what his true story is. But he has came out and stated he is not a Satanist. I thought he was. Um, so thinking, uh, going in there, so he's on this show for hour long, two hours long and sometimes, talking to him about all these different issues. And one of the few that actually talks about what's going on with him. Now, the problem with these interviewers is that because they're afraid of losing the guest, not having them back, and then, of course, not having that time to fill up their channel, they never really follow up with hard-hitting questions. And they don't uh, interrogate the person to a degree in a nice way, which is asking questions. You know, we're just looking for truth. So if people understand that, then they're more than happy to tell their sides of the story. If you badger them, well, then there's a problem. And, you know, none of these interviewers follow up with any kind of questions, no matter who they are. You know, the, uh, the quality of interviewers out there is pathetic because they don't really know anything. So, you know, once they uh, write, they have five questions they write down, then they're done. So uh, then they leave it up to the guest. And some interviewers say, what do you want to say about Gish? So the whole idea is there's real problems there when, um, when you have that kind. It's not what they want to say. You're supposed to be going to different areas uh, that you're interested in and that you think others are interested in. So he talked about this on several occasions. And his last interview, he extrapolated onto what he had said before about 9-11, World War III and other things. So I think it's interesting. Now, he must be in on a lot of stuff or was in on a lot of stuff. you got to remember, if he was out of the military, whether it's 1990 or 1995, you're talking about uh, 25, 30 years ago. So, you know, this is old information, but, you know, nobody is ever an ex-military, an ex-agent, ex-FBI. Everybody is connected to those organizations to the day they got. They got connections. They know people. Their friends are in that. So everybody, whether you're an ex-cop or anything, you know what's going on because you're talking to those people and you have contacts there. Uh, so that's important to understand what is going on in the bigger picture. So he talked about this um 
extraterrestrial stuff on several. But he did go into details. He stated that he went to Area 51, which is where Bob Lazar and so many other people are. And there's only one way of getting there. You have to fly this particular plane from Las Vegas that is, has been okayed to land there. I'm assuming it's a military uh, transport. So you have to fly in there on that plane. That's the only way to get in there officially. Um, I guess people don't drive there. They probably don't. They want you to exit, uh, enter through a secure place. And what more secure is being checked before you even get on the airplane. So apparently there aren't people driving to their bases. Obviously there are trucks that go in and out of there. Maybe there are some workers that drive there, etc., that live in the immediate area. Uh, I've heard these stories as well. So we just don't know. So, um, but he claims he's been there. I'm not sure what his military position is, what kind of free time he has. He is an intelligence, he's psyops, he's also a chaplain, which meaning he can go anywhere, anytime. The gates are open to him. I'm a chaplain here, I'm here to talk to somebody. Um, so, and he's an officer, and generally officers are not questioned about anything they do in the military as far as I know. Now, I don't have any military experience, and I don't know how that works. And uh, generally, you're not going to find officers that will talk to you overly well. Enlisted men know nothing. They're just idiots. They tell you about what they, the little peanut reality that they know of as the lowest level on the military ladder. Uh, officers generally don't talk to you, and they're certainly not going to tell you internal stuff in general. Uh, they are under secrecy forever. They have pensions. They have other things they get. So all of that is a big, um, uh, difficult area of reality. A lot of these people are in the reserves. Even when you get out of the military, you're in the reserves for anywhere from five to 10 years more than your military service, which means you can be called back at any time. This is something I talked to a military officer about that he talked because he didn't want to go and do anything, but there was all sorts of trouble going on at that time. So he's went there many times. He supposedly worked at Cherokee Mountain, looking at the sky. And his comments was on the particular issues that... Uh, they, uh, well, first of all, he told Stone that I can't talk about, you know, the usual stuff. I can't talk about that. Or I'll be arrested and thrown in prison. I'll be in more trouble than you can imagine. Um, then he follows that up, oddly enough, with the fact that we really didn't see anything. We couldn't really, there were UFOs up there. He said, mostly what's up there is space junk. And there's an awful lot of it. And it's hard to differentiate between the space junk and UFOs. And of course, there was activity up there that was unidentified, a certain percentage of it. But uh, as far as he was concerned, none of this was extraterrestrial in nature, meaning these weren't alien crafts or they didn't really know. That's his jive. And it doesn't sound like he's telling the truth there. Uh, that's my take on that. There's an awful lot of stuff we've seen. He denies everything just like he denies psychic power. And he wasn't in the... Um, the Stargate program that the military, particularly the Army, was having with goofballs like Ed Dames and others in there. Or he was, and they don't want to mention him because he's kind of the bad egg. He's the smelly egg you don't want to bring up. Because if you bring up the Stargate program and then you bring in Michael Aquino, well, <laughs> oh, the Satan program? Should we believe what they did? Because, you know, it's just that Satanist guy. He, it's just total garbage. So the Stargate people are not going to mention it. There could have been an a, uh, agreement between them because you got to remember that everything in this life is a, um, is a fraud. And he's a psyops guy. So, well, you know, you know, guys, you got to keep me out of this because if I get in this, you're going to be in big trouble. It certainly could have been done and they could carry this on. The problem is we can't believe anywhere, any uh, anybody, anywhere, anytime. This is what makes research. So whatever comes out of somebody's mouth is meaningless. Oh, I wrote a book on this. I'm an expert. I'm going to tell you what happened in this earth. No, you're going to tell me what happened to you in this organization, what you went through. And there could be millions, hundreds, thousands of people who went through the same thing that you did and come off with different experiences. So... Uh, what you went through and you reporting your personal interpretation of what you went through has a certain low level credibility. We have to get what you say and have it verified by others. And even then, we don't know how true it is or not, considering they're paid informants to make sure that uh, the stories go out there. Um, so, basically, he, kind of, he follows this up. And you, as I said, you got to listen to all these interviews and find out that... Um, there wasn't anything there that we could tell was extraterrestrial in nature. That's his what he's claiming. 
So as I said, he follows a very traditional company line when it comes to all of this. He believes in spirits, but not in human capacities of telekinesis, uh, psychic power, etc., which really makes no sense at all. If you're going to steady occultism, well, occultism is all about you being at the very least a channel, but he believes that there are entities out there, said and all the Egyptian gods and probably other ones, um, that you can uh, evoke, meaning you bring to you, you evoke them and you get assistance from them. You evoke a spirit and you tell it what to do and it's supposed to go out and help you. Um, so he apparently believes that. I'm going to verify this uh, when I read his uh, books, Temple of Set. But, you know, all of his books, there's really nothing in them. Anything you get from the Temple of Set that is publicly accessible, there's nothing in them. They're, they're kindergarten levels of uh, explanation of everything. So when we get involved in all these things, that's the reality uh, that we run into. So he don't, he's stating there are no extraterrestrials. Secondly, he said, and well, people questioned him and said, well, what about all this technology we have? So he really didn't address, and of course the interviewer didn't go, well, what about Bob Lazar? He said there were alien aircraft there. Do you believe in that? Do you think there was? Did you see alien aircraft? Let me, now that's kind of an easy question, isn't it? Interviewer, here's what they said. Did you get that? <laughs> nothing. So you get this all the time from these interviewers that really don't know their subject matter, and really terrible interviewers. And they haven't thought down and thought about this and say, what should I ask this guy? And then they're, they're not enough on their feet to come back with a proper question. So that was never asked, so we don't know. Certainly that would be his answer to it all indirectly. And I don't like indirect stuff. I like direct stuff. Uh, his was the fact that First of all, Einstein was completely wrong. You can go faster than the speed of light, and it's just a matter of uh, doing it, and that Einstein's, all of his equations were wrong. There's even a, a, um, a mathematics that is showing that he's wrong, that is all part of the Einstein theories, which, of course, th -th 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 don't talk about, which is true. Um, there's a whole uh, how Einstein was wrong and the equations there and everything else uh, showing all this and Einstein was very well aware of it. The semi-retarded patent uh, reviewer guy who changed the world of physics. So the whole idea is that um, we have some serious problems with, but he doesn't believe any of that. He says you can go faster than his bed. That's an interesting key. Now, the head of Lockheed Skunk Works uh, came out at his retirement uh, dinner and says, we have the capacities to travel interplanetary uh, right now. And this was reported by a parapsychologist. I always forget his you know, terrible at nice. Barry something, it's in his book. He's talked about this. Uh, who's a big parapsychologist that worked for UCLA, based out of Los Angeles, who wrote, um, I think it was the movie The Entity, which was based on his research where a woman was being raped. So he's very active there. He's acted there with a lot of Hollywood types, a lot of Hollywood executives who've had different abductions and demonic problems. And of course, you don't go around saying, hello, how is it? Well, we got the new fall season. But let me tell you about how I was abducted last night. Yeah, that's going to get you far in any boardroom. So the whole idea is that these are the kind of problems. So the, Barry has uh, went through this. He, well, he's kind of an odd, um, overly sex dude. Uh, let's put it that way. Uh, certainly has an interesting background. And he claims that he also was instrumental in the um, remote viewing programs and they had wrote protocols, etc., which I wouldn't doubt either. People like to claim this stuff when it may be a community effort at that time where everybody was kind of talking to each other. But the point is, is that nothing was ever talked, um, was asked Aquino directly like this. So Aquino has to volunteer everything. Very bad. He's in control again. He's going to give you what you want because you haven't pinpointed him. Bad research, bad interview. Um, and while this guy has good guests on, he's a really bad interviewer. Like uh, just about everyone out there that I've listened to, they're just bad interviewers. They don't know the subject matter. They don't know what to ask. 
So you have to be really uh, a, a very advanced researcher and know your subject matter. So when you hear somebody say, eh, well, that don't make sense to me. Uh, can you clarify this for me? Because Joe Michael over here said something else. So the whole idea is um, you have to clarify. So what he said, of course, and as he said, the skunk work guy said we had that. And of course, Aquino's kind of verifying this. He's saying we have crafts that can go uh, the speed of light and maybe faster. One of the problems is, and of course it is an interesting fact, which is always nice to hear, is that if you're going faster than the speed of light, you are traveling at an unbelievable speed. So it's like going 100 miles an hour down your street and you're trying to go, uh, you're trying to find a house on that street, but you're going 100 miles. Well, you're going so fast, you're going to have to time it. You're going to have to think, well, if I want to reach this house on this street going 100 miles an hour, uh, I'm going to have to slow down way before that. So these are the type of things. And it does make sense. If you're going so fast, uh, you're going to have to be very, very careful of what's there. And secondly, what if there's something in the way? Can you steer through it? Now, you're going at these super speeds. What about asteroid belt? What about planets? Maybe you're going right through a planet. You're trying to go to the planet on the other side. So these are things to, you know, I've always found this to be with time travel. People talk about this, but, you know, how'd you get around? You don't have an ID. You're wearing funny clothes. You don't got no money. You know, your money says, uh, you know, uh, 2002 on it. And you're in 1956. Well, somebody looks at that and says, well, stays. this money's wrong. So the whole idea is the money doesn't look the same. That was from 1956, and what is modern money we use today? There's even little metal wires in there and everything else for anti-counterfeiting. So you're nobody, and you don't have an ID that says it. How do you get around? So uh, you have nothing to pay anybody. So, I mean, these are all the things that these time travelers don't think about, but is a real situation. So he claims that we have these technologies. We developed them as Earth beings that were very good at this. This is something our scientists have advanced in. And, of course, our technology, which is here now, is pretty much 200 years ahead of what the public is offered today. And, you know, it has taken many, many years. And, of course, it's, it's a little faster today, but it usually takes 30 years from the introduction of a technology. And I remember this in with fax machines. I remember fax machines were used by businesses. They probably were five or $10,000 a machine. And um, I went into uh, different businesses, uh, particularly the aircraft industry, and they were using these in, like, 1970. Um, and this was amazing. And, uh, and these are readily available. It's, just, uh, it's money based. So they, it took 30 years for them to come down to the fact that now they're, you know, 20 bucks. So the whole idea is that's how things work. We do have anti gravity. I've seen it personally myself. So have many thousands of other people. Um, I've seen it 500 feet away. 100% verified, and I was with a witness. So um, the whole idea is that, and I don't know why I'd make up anything. It's, uh, I'm not trying to uh, prove fantasy. I'm trying to prove fact. But we've got to find the fact first to prove it. So, um, so he states that we have that, that Einstein was wrong. Almost everybody. Nobody follows Einstein anymore in the bigger picture. Now, the bottom line is everything is based on quantum physics now because it works. Plain and simple. Einstein is an afterthought. It's amazing how many people continue to want to protect him to uh, in their institutions because they've been brainwashed that you have to say that or they will fire you. But on the other hand, now they believe it themselves. These kind of people are pretty pathetic uh, and they are a disgrace to their field. But they're scientists. Well, what have they done? Made weapons for psychotics to use on their own people? Yeah, well, that's what scientists have done. So the whole idea is that we need to um, understand all these things. So he says we can go faster than the speed of light. It's not a big deal. And everything that goes with that. So um, that's what he said. So there, in his mind, there are no extraterrestrials, physical beings. We didn't get any technology from them. So I guess he's saying that those uh, spacecraft were not there. Now, there's an awful lot of stuff at Area 51, including all sorts of testing that goes on there, secret bases. You know, it's in the middle of nowhere for a reason. So the whole idea is that they're testing all sorts of things there. So you'll see all sorts of weird stuff going on in the sky there. If you were to watch it every night, you'll just see it because they're going to do it. And uh, there's a lot of things to test. And they don't want to test it during the day where it's easy to see. And, of course, everything is hidden there. Um, 
So are there extraterrestrials? Are these things happening? Well, uh, uh, and I don't want to get into that bigger picture here, but as far as Michael Aquino is concerned, there is not extraterrestrials. They have not worked with them. That the science that we have today is 100% made, invented here. And he said this in his interview. It comes from Earth. It is from Earth. And it's made on Earth. So plain and simple is he believes all of that. He doesn't believe any of this comes from extraterrestrials or he's afraid to state it. We just don't know. You got to remember, this guy doesn't have much credibility. He's a psyop. It's like asking a magician uh, to do something for it. Could you ever trust a, a magician, a stage magician? Well, they're going to pull some sort of trick on you one way. That's who they are. They're tricksters. They're liars. They're deceitful people otherwise known as stage psyops people, because actually they're doing a psyops on you. Well, let me pull this rabbit out of the hat. Well, there's no rabbit in that hat. It's, it's all an illusion uh, produced by trickery. So can we ever? So that's what psyops. So this guy is living at it. And he also has a lot of pressure on him because he's been accused of horrible, horrible things. So he has to cover his bottom. So the whole idea is that... Um, is he going to come out and state this? One of the biggest problems you can get into in life is start talking about extraterrestrials. When you start getting into that, the water gets very hot. This is one thing that they don't like you to talk about for whatever reason. Probably all the old boys and uh, these corrupt um, uh, intelligence agencies, they just don't like this stuff. They don't like you talking about that. Why? Why aren't you just laughed at? Because there, it is real. It is real, the fact of what's going on, and they don't want anybody making it look good. So, you do need to understand that. You need to understand that. So, can we trust Michael Aquino? Well, he is a high-ranking. You know, he's just one notch under a general. He was in the military with a sterling record, uh, other than apparently some of his after our activities, which are unbelievably uh, disgusting, if any of it is true, and we just don't know. There's no proof. There's a lot of people alleging this. People have come out, they said this or that. I mean, there's a lot of people that say he did this or that with no proof of it whatsoever. And the people making these allegations are people who are mentally ill, have been horribly traumatized. We just don't know what the facts are there. So, uh, so this is the reality we have in terms of what. But I do like that this is an unvarnished, a person who could, particularly at the end of their life, and a person who does have connections, who have not really given you startling information, but they have given you information. The fact that he's come out and said that 9-11 um, uh, was a red flag. Does anybody believe it isn't the red flag? Um he has attacked the FBI, the head of the FBI at that time, uh, alleging that he was uh, involved in it, as well as the CIA, as well as Mossad. Well, uh, I'm not sure that's so shocking. Who cares? Another person who doesn't like the CIA and Mossad, get in line. So, um, so there's so many uh, theories about 9-11 that, uh, that certainly this isn't shocking. He's just coming out saying, yes, this was a red flag. And anytime you can get somebody agreeing in the bigger picture, I think it's helpful to say, well, you know, something is going on here. What's going on? Is his story right? Well, we don't know. We just don't know. Um, he's at the end of his life. He's going to die in a few months or even a month later, could be, uh, from his, some of his interviews. Uh, is this uh, has any validity? So. Uh, he, as I said, he is an intelligence officer. So what he's saying about extraterrestrials here is following the company line that you get from people who generally are not connected is that they tell these people that this is all Earth-based. Don't believe that stuff. And I'm not sure that anybody would talk to Michael Aquino and give him the facts. I don't think he was liked. Uh, while he may have been smiled at because he was an officer and tolerated for whatever reason, I'm not sure that people sat at the old dinner table and opened up their heart to him and gave him all sorts of facts. I'm not sure how true how that that is a reality. Now he was able to function within the military, uh, but in a lot of ways, nobody claims him as a friend. He claims everybody as a friend. John Alexander, every general he talks about are people involved in. So, oh, they were his buddies. 
except the SRI people. He doesn't talk about any of those people in terms of the civilians. Uh, but it's all the same thing. All the generals are his buddy. He's my good friend. Uh, more psyop stuff. We just don't know. It's hard to believe that with his reputation, which must get around the military, that anybody would give him much respect. Because, you know, if you're accused of something, you're guilty. Uh, very few people are going to say, gee, you were screwed over. I'm your buddy. Most people are going to say, well, yeah, it's unfortunate. But, you know, they're more siding with the fact that, you know, well, you're a, you're a Satanist nut job who's been accused of pedophilia. Um, yeah, come over to dinner. Meet my kids. So the whole idea is who's going to do that, even if you feel someone was wronged. So we need to fully understand how these things are. And it's not what the information is. It's how people interpret them and what we are to think about it. So the whole that's what he claims with extraterrestrials. The bottom line is he doesn't believe in extraterrestrials. He basically has stated there are no ETs. We got no um, technology from them, which means we don't have any of their crafts. All of that thing is what he said. Now, as I said, is it does it have any value? I don't know. As I said, he's a big question mark. All the research with him, I keep going back and forth. Uh, he seems to be um, the proverbial... Um, a communist under the bed. Oh, it's Michael Aquino. It's Aleister Crowley. Uh, it's the Masons. All of this doesn't add up, particularly when it's individuals. Because when I do research, uh, you know, Aleister Crowley was a nobody. So this is a um, an intelligence officer. But what does that mean? What does he have access to? And what is he able to do? We don't know. Uh, obviously, anybody in intelligence, uh, you would think, has a lot of lead way to find out information, but not necessarily. A lot of people don't know what's going on. They're given a story deliberately. So things are compartmentalized, so only certain people know things. And he thinks he knows everything. Now, the same thing with John Alexander. John Alexander believes he knows everything. And guess what? This is the guy with the non-lethal stuff that's uh, in every uh, metaphysical uh, butthole that you can get into. Uh, he started the Art Bell Show. Uh, all of the John Alexander, and, and uh, he came out with the same thing. There are no aliens. He got together with Jogler, who came out and said, there ain't no aliens, uh, you know. I drank the vino, I eat the snails, and uh, you know, there is no... They're just spirit beings from, uh, in, by, from a McDonald wrapper left on the street in Bangladesh. So this is what uh, Jacques Vallée, the cowardice bought-off person, gets lots of money from the military, by the way, and his research and other things. So uh, John Alexander did the uh, intro for his book. <laughs> is there any reason to read it? Not really. So the whole idea is that um, he thinks he knows everything. I don't think he knows everything at all. I think he's segmented as well. They know who they talk to, and they're not going to talk to John Alexander. And if they do, they're going to pull a psyops on him and give him false information. So these are all the things, as usual. Do we know anything? No. Do we have leads? Can we extrapolate on things a wee bit? Well, yeah, of course we can do that. Everything's a wee bit. A wee bit here, a wee bit there, and uh, verification of all this is cloudy as you get. Because even if that person believes this to be true, like Michael Aquino, if he believes this to be true and is not fe feeding us psyops, because, you know, we're dealing with somebody that's his entire life, and he has stated it, and I, I believe it. He's the number one psyops expert in the world. He's dealing with a trillion-dollar military. He's done it for 30 years. Uh, he has vast amounts of information from around the world. Um, I believe he is. That means he is PSYOPs 24-7. So anything that comes out of his mouth is PSYOPs. So, so can we believe anything? No. Is he giving the company line? That's right. John Alexander says the same thing. There ain't no extraterrestrials. He's never. I've seen him on shows. I should know. I heard nothing in my military career about extraterrestrials, which again is kind of shocking if you've heard nothing. What was it? Hangar 18? What about all the other stuff? Oh, it's water balloons. It's hazy stuff in the sky. It's Japanese. They came over. And uh, they were shaved completely. And they were freaks. But it was a Japanese aircraft, as uh, one researcher will tell you. Who, by the way, is a guy who looks at... Uh, I'm going to do a little um, report on him. I can't remember his name either. Um, but I'm going to do a little report on another really strange guy. 
uh, who claims he knew Aquino. But the whole idea is we can't verify any of this stuff. We just don't know. But again, here's we're pouring, um, we're pouring into a giant bucket everything we get. And at the bottom there are filters. And as the you pour this into the bucket, the uh, the filters bring it down to some level of understanding. Can we compare this? Have we got other information? Well, you know, secrets have been made for hundreds of years. Secrets are made, they're kept, and they're enforced. If you don't think that's true, well, you're pretty um, naive. So at any time, any place, you can be taken out, disappeared, your house can be gone, everything about you can be disappeared. This is a reality. It's happened. And the entire world is in on this. You can't go anywhere without the same attitudes there because the same people running uh, all the intelligence agencies in the United States are working with people in every single other country out there. Um, and they all want money from the U.S. So they all do whatever they're told. That's the way it is. So, And... Um, it's as simple as that. So nobody comes out with anything different or unusual. So hopefully that makes things a little clearer and gives you his viewpoint. Uh, can we verify this? Uh, does anybody else agree? We'll go from there. Until next time.